Okay, hi Boin. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us to your house. Uh, again! Again! Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yes. nice filming you. Uh, how, how's life? How's, I mean, what's your plans for Chinese New Year? I'm going back Chinese New Year in the morning of Sunday. Sunday very la. Very early. Right. To, to, X, to like 6 a.m. before 6 a. M. everybody wakes up. Why does it have to be 6 a.m. again? Because to beat the jam up. Okay, so you need to follow the plus guideline. They tell you before 10. But then, you see 10 o'clock, you will wake up really. Right. So you want to be, <laughs> You want to travel at the twilight zone. That's the sleepiest hour. I see. I see. Six a.m. is the hardest to wake up. So right. if you wake up, you beat the traffic. You get out Saramban before eight o'clock usually. Rule of thumb. Mm. Yeah. That's JB for you. South, south. You get out right. Saramban. Pass by Saramban before eight o'clock. Right. You should be fine. So you're from JB actually, is it? Yes, I'm from JB. When do you come to KL? I came to KL. Let me think, uh, about 14 years ago. 14 20, years. 20, 2008. 2008. 2008, yeah. Yeah, sorry, the LED light is, is, is falling off. But yeah, I came in 2008, I came in to study. And then after I graduated, I found a work. And then I got married here. Okay. And I bought a house. And I bought a house again. This is the one, this second house you're in. And 14 years in KL. Mm. Right, okay. Were you, were you a Christian? Like, when you were no, I was not. I was not a Christian. Uh, even throughout my uni life, zero. Know nothing about Christians. Right. Okay. Christianity la. And I have I have a lot of Christian friends la. Mm. Uh, but I always make fun of them. Haha. <laughs> so you Buddhist? Were you kind of like? I was. Uh, I think of myself more like Richard Dawkins, an atheist. <laughs> but then I feel like a Richard Dawkins a bit too atheist la. So then I drop down, become agnostic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So how did an, an agnostic Bowen become a Christian? Ah, so how did I become a Christian? Well, haha, <laughs> awkward because uh, I uh, was interested in my then girlfriend, now wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she was raised a Christian. So the only way you can get a Christian girl is to go to church, haha, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I went to church for a while and then I was like, oh, this is a waste of time. Right. Yeah, and then I... I wanted to stop going and then there was a uh, uh, in hindsight this is quite embarrassing actually I, I felt like I had a supernatural experience okay and then uh, but I, I still believe that God used that moment although it was quite embarrassing uh, and then I started going to church uh, well kind of going to ch- start going to church like this Sunday like, as a Sunday Christian yeah so what would you say your theology is like back then? My theology back then? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know the word theology until like a few years ago. Right. Mm. I would say my theology is... Uh, there is a... I don't think... I don't think Yahweh is just like any other God. I think Yahweh is the only God. I think Christ is His way. Uh, is, is the only way to go to Him. But I would still don't understand what is the point of all this. Is it just going to heaven? Then what's the point of us on earth? So yeah, yeah. Sin couldn't couldn't figure out what's what sin about, mm. like like that lah. Mm. But I, I would say, uh, it makes sense lah to 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 have to love this God who love you, and you have to serve this God who love you who die for you. Then you have to. Mm, Give back a bit lah, give back a bit. I don't know, maybe not necessarily die, but uh, we spend a lot of time and money for the church. Yeah, it was it was not very clear that theology. We don't think about it so much, to be honest. Mm. So that was kind of the majority of your Christian experience going up. Uh, Christian experience. Uh, growing up, I did not grow up Christian. But uh, after I became a Christian, which is 2012, maybe? 2012? Last, I think it was last Sunday of 2012 when I got baptized. And I got baptized not too long after I have my conversion. Mm. So then, uh, yeah, I, I. That was 2012. So I did not say grow up as a Christian, but I did become a little bit more acquainted with Christianity uh, even before I uh, became a reformed uh, Christian right okay reformed Christian how did you become a reformed Christian oh how did I become a reformed Christian was it because of CRC? 
CERC, uh, I would say CRC definitely was part of my reformation. Yes, I would say so. But it started like this. Uh, I got retrenched and then I got retrenched but I managed to secure some contract jobs uh, uh, in God's good providence actually. And I, and I happened to ha have only worked half the time for the same amount of uh, income. So that gave me a lot of free time. So I started reading seriously, especially when I was uh, leading, uh, in my previous church, I was leading a small group and I wanted to uh, share God's word with them seriously. So I started reading uh, for myself seriously. And some of the things start to uh, pop out. And then I started to have questions, especially surrounding sin. I couldn't reconcile um, God's sovereignty and the and sinfulness of man. So there was a lot of question about free will and stuff like that. Uh, so I had a friend who was reformed, evangelical, and he says, uh, who told you about free will? Who told you that you are uh, the denominator over your salvation? I was like, oh, wait, what? Uh, I choose to believe, right? What's all this about? Then he said, have you heard of Calvinism? I was like, wait, what's Calvinism? So I went and Google Calvinism, basically. Yeah. Hmm. And then, uh, and then I started uh, Googling Calvin uh, Calvinism. Then I started to research everything about this. Then everything started pouring in, you know, John Piper, Desiring God, uh, Doctrine of Scripture. I was looking at, looking up uh, Westminster Confession and I found out about do uh, Doctrine of Scriptures. Then I was like, what is this? And I go back to the same friend. Uh, I said, dude, I need, I need to, I need to go to a church that is doing this stuff, man. Then he was like, oh, okay. Uh, why don't you try Googling CRC? He's not sure what's the acronym for, but he had <laughs> uh, a friend who was uh, studying at IMU and they had uh, uh, worked with C uh, CRC before or they, they have members of the CF in IMU who are from CRC. So he was like, uh, I, don't know really, I don't really know what it stands for. Go to Google it. So I Google CRC. And then I came to CRC uh, on the wait what yeah so that was uh, that was how uh, my journey with CRC uh, begun right began I don't know which one is the right one <laughs> yeah so your first CRC experience was a wait what so was that very much of a turning point for you was that like really mind blowing anything? the first one not so much I'll tell you that mm, when we arrived they were downstairs they have a table open they're like. Hi, welcome to CRC. I was like, hmm, okay. And then they say, have you paid? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so I was like, literally, wait, what? We have to pay? I was like, okay, good. I, I, I think the church should have the right to do this, to just collect money up front. And then they realize, oh, no, 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 these are, these are new guests. And no one, they, no one is bringing them here. They, they try to refund, but I was like, no, no, it's okay. Since it's a special event, I'm mm -hmm. fine with paying. I don't remember much of that wait, what, to be honest. Mm. There is the wait, what, where... Jajun had the pacifier. That that one was good. Don't be a baby. Don't be a baby. Mm. And the way to don't be a baby is, don't be a baby. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Yeah. So that was that that really uh, that was really good. I think. And I think wait, what remains uh, staple for a uh, blur Christian or Sotong Christian. Wait, what mm. is for you? I think if you are not sure about your Christian life. Can you remember what particularly about that way what was like it kind of struck you? Yeah, you ought to be teachers by now. Mm. That was mm. like I was like, oh, I, I thought that I was trying to be teachers. I, tr I was trying to teach my small group at the time, and then I bring back this thing to my small group like you all oh, ought to be teachers by now. You are all raised Christian, right? You all raised as Christian children, and then you guys know nuts about the scripture. Uh, that didn't that didn't go well, by the way. Uh, so yeah, that really struck me. Like this, this, uh, this utter lack of maturity, and uh, not able to teach. Uh, yeah, that was what really struck me. So that really got me into becoming very serious about uh, becoming mature and well acquainted with the word. Mm. That's what really struck me. I think. Mm. Mm. Okay, so what happened after that? What happened after that? I started uh, double churching and I tried to reform uh, my previous uh, small group. Uh, not so much the church, but maybe the small group, yes. And uh, we, we tried that for two years. 
it was a lot of long and late nights mm. um, but um, thank god we, we managed to reform a few and some of them we're still working on today I think mm. and then the after double teaching for like two years uh, there was the Matthew series and then there was the part I think was in Matthew uh, Matthew 16 or 17 where Jesus said to Peter uh, on this rock I will build my church and we know that to be saying talking about some form of church structure and then, and then, and then uh, the authority of Christ flows through uh, a leadership mm-hmm. not necessarily uh, the apostle or the chair of Peter but there is a certain structure to it because we see also in Ephesians 4 uh, uh, Jesus gave pastors teachers so there is a, a structure there and I realized what I have been doing all along although I think uh, the leaders back then were uh, I, I don't really agree with the leaders back then what they were doing but I cannot uh, go against uh, Jesus' structure church structure so I, that's where I decided uh, I should stop undermining uh, the church structure. So mm. then I decided to leave. Then we have a new problem, which is uh, where should we go? And we kept wanting to visit other churches, but we somehow, and I think in God's, God's good providence again, never managed to visit any other churches, but we do ha- have other Christian friends and and hear about other things uh, but in the end we just thought like why bother this is where we learn everything this is where we are fed until we are mature uh, even if you think about secu- if, you, if you think secularly it's just good to give back to, to the church but of course it's more than that I see that um, this is God's sovereignty and God is calling us to see our seat and I think that's the the one reason why I decided to stay in CRC and commit to CRC and thank God for that I'm now I just signed in uh, this month mm. and I'm now a member of CRC official <laughs> <laughs> so is my wife by the way mm. so congratulations to both of us right how how would you say your experience as a you know as a membership candidate and then eventually be a member and right how is that how has that shaped your theology or changed your mindset about church I have been I think we or I have been very blessed to be doing the church membership while doing God's story series Hmm. the BT series and that started in 2020 yeah 2020 and 2021 right Hmm. and so I I saw in this year so I just finished my membership so that's two years of BT series and two years of membership and just goes in hand in hand and it was a tremendous experience and extremely uh, convicting and cutting experience uh, for me just going through the entire Old Testament and then the entire New Testament seeing how it is really one big story from creation to consummation and how you know, Jesus is not with us today I mean not physically on earth then where is his work carried out or what is his mission left to be done and then you can see this whole new story that comes after the apostles is being played out in the church and then that's what we learn about in the membership course and it's just such a sanctifying experience because you see how being part of a church is actually being part of God's big picture. You know, if you feel if you if you want to be like David or Peter in the New Testament, be part of the church, and you'll be really. Are you, do you really want to miss out on this whole thing that is going on? This is the most important thing that's gonna that is happening in human history. Do you really want to miss out on this part of this part? Mm-hmm. But of course, it's more than that. It's not just trying not to miss out because God did call us to this, and God called us to become part of His church because the church is not only on the mission, the church is the mission. We learn from Ephesians that the church is the manifest, uh, God's wisdom manifested, and will continue to manifest God's wisdom to the world. 
and and all this efficient series was also part of the God's uh, God story uh, series, and that just goes so well with the membership where we learn about history, and you learn that you learn church history, which is so rich and ancient, and people fought on many many things not because they like to, but because these are important things to fight over, and you just see how uh, God uses us humans to continue to to expand his kingdom in the church through the church until today and then also this whole understanding about this uh, we're just discussing this with a friend today at lunch uh, about you know sometimes we, we become a bit too you know holy moly and and just like oh all, all church are all church are god's church but then going through the, me- ch- the the membership thing that we we learned that there is actually a significant importance about focusing on the local church and we learned that from the apostles who mm. have clearly good idea about local churches mm. so then i start to see this importance about just committing to a local church instead of just committing to the church you know coming to the church we all the church, all christians are the church you know but how about coming to a local church there's actually uh, it is actually very biblical. It, in fact, it would be unbiblical if you're just committed to the church, you know, local church, and you learn all this in the membership. And also in the membership, you learn how not to dichotomize your natural life and your spiritual life. You know, like Christians again, being holy moly, we'd be like, oh, Christians might be like, must be like this, and then, yeah, but when they go, they, they they behave differently because they 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 fail to see that God who created the spiritual world, which is what we're doing right now here, and God, it's also the god of this world you know engineering science medicine god is still over all this so there is no dichotomy mm. and you learn all that in, in, in membership so it, coming out of it just makes you coming out of the membership course just makes you so uh, mature and appreciative of the word and also appreciative appreciative of the church mm. that has come a really really long way with the with the work of very very smart and wise men hmm. uh, and women into it right so absolutely love the membership course <laughs> I'll do it again in a heartbeat <laughs> I can tell from your tone that like, <laughs> this whole learning a lot about Christianity yeah. is really exciting for you and it seems, very, you're, it seems like you're very enthusiastic to you know keep going on as a member in CRC what, what are you excited for for like the next few years of you committing to CRC what am I excited for I'm excited to see how far I will go before mm-hmm. uh, uh, before I I start to relent not 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 in an experiment way but I I really would like to know myself as a Christian and be challenged do I really uh do I really know God? Do I really love God? Mm. Or or am I just loving God and serving the church because I happen to be in a privileged position now? Mm. So I would like to to I would like to know if I'm really if I really love God. And on th- on also uh, not apart from that, I also having you know learned about how the church from from Peter until now is two thousand more than two thousand years now, wait maybe around two thousand years, and it requires so much more than just knowing the word, knowing Bible, knowing doctrines. It it requires so much of this. We learn this in the membership course as well, about learning about church structure, how to think about this. There's a lot of philosophy that goes into it, and I really look forward to just getting trained more. To be someone who can be uh, governing or organizing or helping out in the church and building up the church, and let's not kid ourselves. You, it, you, it, just knowing the word alone is not going to cut it. You need to have, you need to know how to help the elders and how to help the deacons and help the brothers run the church, and all that requires a lot of wisdom. So there's a lot to learn, and I'm looking forward to all that in the next few years, and also helping the church grow as much as she can and helping uh, all the brothers and sisters already in the church to uh, just grow deep roots in the word and then mature and come help us on this mission again because again you know the church is not 
just on the mission, that just is the mission. Mm-hmm. So, looking forward to that. 